What's going on, Charles Botenston here from BPI. Today we're going to be talking about, I got seven things that sellers really need to be going over in their mind as they're interviewing agents, especially in this modern marketplace, you know, this new marketplace, whatever you want to call it, is that even in a fast-paced marketplace, even in, in an owner's, when the owners and the sellers, it's in your favor, you know, right now it's kind of an equilibrium, more in the buyer's favor. And the thing is, a lot of owners, they look at commission or they look at, you know, someone that they should not be hiring. And the reason being is, I'll, I'll bring it up, is that they essentially don't check off one of these boxes. Now is the time that working with a professional is more important than ever. Okay, and, and I've stressed that for a while. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, okay, I understand, Charles. You know, working with a professional, tell us all about it. And the reason being is that especially in the brokerage community, it, it's, it, this is the best way to put it, is that I come from a family of teachers, okay? I know there's a lot, my mom was a teacher, my sister-in-law, my cousins, they all were teachers. I, I can't speak like a teacher because they ha they know the inner workings. They deal with students on a regular basis. It's the same thing with me, is that I deal with bad brokers. I deal with tough management companies and boards and owners and attorneys and banks and all, everyone. You know, right now we have just an estate attorney that it's, it's challenging to get the deal done and we all wanna get the deal done. And the thing is, you have to hire right because there's a lot of agents that'll either give up or just not actually provide you with not only the service, but just the, the wherewithal. They'll be totally lost and you're like, why did I even hire this person? So it's better to do it on the hiring. It's better to obviously talk to as many people as you can. So the first one is the ability to demonstrate value. That is the simplest form. Demonstrating value on their company, demonstrating value on themselves, demonstrating value on their marketing, on their ability to sell, just demonstrating value. Do they talk about the benefits in your regard and not their own. It sounds basic, but if they're going through the presentation and they're like, well, we go globally and our website is available to 40 million people and our video is going to, it's like, okay, great, but how does that impact me? How, how is that gonna help my sale? Well, the 40 million people is gonna help because there's gonna be a lot of overseas buyers that, buyers that are interested in New York City because we're gonna have a stable marketplace. The video is actually great because it gives you, outside of pictures and a floor plan, and you go into it. You demonstrate the value that every single piece of not only marketing themselves and their company provides for the benefit of the owner. Moving on, talking bad about other agents. This is, this, you know, a lot of people, they don't really care about this. You know, owners don't really care about this. And the reason being is that if they talk bad about other agents, they're probably gonna be talking about other, bad about other bankers, attorneys, uh, not only other agents themselves while they're in a deal, but maybe the buyer, the seller, maybe the board, you know, people in the elevator, maybe the super, you know, managing agent. This, this goes across the board. This, this video is gonna be one of the most important things as a seller that you see. And the reason being is that if you bring up, here's the best way, and obviously out of all these things, the best way to actually dial this in is with a question. So the question that you ask is, well, there's this agent that has done a lot of deals in my in my building why don't i hire them if the person that you're interviewing in other words the agent that you're interviewing starts going into well they come from a small firm or they're not really good or i heard that they are and they start trashing them that's not good but if the agent actually goes and they say you know what that's a great question and the reason being is that they have a lot of homes that they have for sale in the building in the area they want to push those together or they want to push those first in other words they want to sell those first in other words you're not saying they're good or bad you're not saying their company their ethics their morals you're not granted if <laughs> the person is unethical and it's it's obviously you know, you don't want to bring it up, but you want to say, well, you know, there's a couple of things that, you know, I, I would do your research before hiring them, things like that. Number three, defending their commission or the price. Okay, bring up a higher price that maybe you don't even want to accept. Okay, so say you're going to put your home on for $2 million and, or you're okay with putting it on for $2 million. Say, why don't we put it on for 2.5 or 2.2 or 2.3? How the agent defends their position on $2 million or you say, actually, this agent said they're gonna get a lower compensation, okay? This has nothing to do about compensation, but this is, this is kind of a, a, uh, a segue or maybe even a role play on how they're actually gonna defend your price when you say, I'm not going lower, or I'm not gonna do that, or I'm not gonna move out, or terms of the deal, or whatever the case is. You're kind of giving them an ability to prove that they know how to negotiate. They know how to defend themselves. Defend themselves whether it's commission or your price. Because 
that's the most important thing is like, how can someone prove that they're good at negotiating? How, you know, yes, maybe they'll give you, well, we listed at this price and we sold it at this price, or we listed it at a million and we sold it at a million. That kind of, maybe, but maybe it was just underpriced. You know, maybe it was a really good marketplace. Maybe that that buyer really wanted to buy that, that apartment because that outdoor space. Spending their commission or your price. Number four is their sales skills. Okay, their sales skills is very, very important. The reason being is that there's gonna be a point in the transaction, in every single transaction, because there's so many people involved, that the ability, I'll, I'll give you an example first. So I, I'm dealing with a, a person that wants to sell their bar, bar in Chelsea, and, and someone that wants to buy the bar in Chelsea. It's an off-market transaction, I'm the only broker involved, and one person doesn't want something to happen, and the other person doesn't want to give in to that. So we are literally for a week at a stalemate, and I went to both of them the whole time. So this is what the broker needs to do. In other words, their sales skills is really more of an influencing skill. Their ability to actually be a solution-oriented mindset. So in other words, they have to go into it and say, okay, well, this person doesn't want to do this, this person doesn't want to give in to that, so how do we actually bring them together to make a deal happen? Because that's what both of them want to happen. So what I brought up is, why don't you just give a little, and then you just give a little, and you can see that you're both just giving a little, and sure enough, now we're gonna make the two parties meet, and then we're gonna go over the financials and hopefully make a deal. But there was literally a stalemate. Well, I'm not gonna do it. I'm, and both said, I'm not gonna do what they want me to do. And that's the thing is that sales is not, yes, you have the, the hard sell and the close and always be closing, but it really comes down to, can you influence them? Can you understand the needs and the wants of both parties so they can come together in a solution-oriented way? Moving on. Number five, pretty straightforward, but this is the ability to connect, the ability to be social. And the reason being is that I, I've walked into way too many open houses, way too many private showings, and the, the agent just stands there or the agent, there's no connection. And the reason there's no connection is if a, I've seen, and it's really hard to tactically prove this outside of the fact that when an agent is upbeat, energetic, enthusiastic, either about the home, the apartment, the neighborhood, whatever the case is, and they bring that to the appointment, they bring that to the open house, there is a monumental emotional difference in the atmosphere between the buyers. The buyers walk in and they say, you know what, I want to buy this home. Or I'm really excited. And that's where, going back to the last one, that's where sales are made. If there is no connection, that connection could be with a doorman or imagining an agent or a the board, attorney, banker, whatever the case is, at one time, those social skills and those, those ability, that ability to connect is going to come in when someone, going back to the sales skills, needs to do something. So while you're going through the walk through the home, the best way is you see how they're connecting with you. Are they asking good questions? Are they only you know, worried about the listing? Or while you're doing the walk through the home during the presentation or the pitch, whatever you want to call it, are they trying to connect with you? Are they learning about you? Are they, are they finding out why you're moving? When are you moving? Uh, why you bought the home? You know, or they see a picture and they say, oh, you, you ski as well. Very basic, but those social skills influence their sales skills. Because there's a lot of people that are really good at sales, but they're not good, at, they're not good socially and they do not connect. And those are hard closers that you don't want to deal do deals with. The opposite is true is that they're really good. There's people that are really social and people that can connect, but they have no sales skills because they don't actually ask for the deal. They don't actually ask for that uncomfortable term or deal or or something in the in the actual transaction that you want. A later closing date or a higher price or not contingent on financing, whatever the case is. Number six, lack of transparency. This is pretty straightforward. So a couple of questions that you can ask is, when do you think my home is gonna sell? What price do you think my home is gonna sell? There's easy ways to answer that. So if someone says, when do you think my home is gonna sell? Or what price do you think my home is gonna sell? And someone, you know, the easy way and in, in a non-professional way that an agent will answer is, they just go into, well, I don't know. You know, it, it depends on the marketplace. It depends on, but if you actually go in and transparently say, you know what, Monday we're gonna film our video, Tuesday we're gonna bring in the photography, uh, Wednesday we're gonna launch, Thursday we're gonna call around, Friday we're gonna, we're gonna put it on say newsletter and, and pump it out socially. We're also gonna be calling around to the area, current clients, past clients. If they, if they have that level of transparency, then they go into on Sunday, we're actually gonna have our first open house. We're gonna follow up with everyone on Monday. On Wednesday, we're gonna have really good feedback. We're gonna call you on Friday. We're gonna make sure that we send it out to an additional set of people that either came 
came through. We're going to have another open house. And then 17 days in, we're going to understand actually 17 days in is usually when we have a really good idea on the current marketplace and where people want to go. Do we need to repaint the kitchen? Is it the price? Is it the marketing? Uh, the ability to move in or out furniture? Do we have to virtually stage it? Do we have to actually stage it? You know, there's, there's a ton of things that you get as feedback. That transparency helps you and says, oh, okay, this, this person is going to be able to tell me when they're going to do everything, not just, I don't know. Last thing is, this is hard, but take things personally, okay? And obviously the basis between taking things personally comes down to an agent doesn't get paid until they actually do a transaction. So that, that's the foundation, okay? So if you take that and you say, well, this person actually has my best interest at heart, that's great, that's fantastic, but do they take things personally? There's a lot of things that a lot of people say mean things to me. A lot of people write mean things to me. You know, there, there's a lot of difficult people here in New York City. Go figure. I know it's crazy. There's a lot of ego here. So the thing is, people are going to say things. People are going to yell at you, hang up on you. In other words, as an agent, how as an, how, as an owner do you understand that, that this agent is being hired to objectively sell your home? In other words, they look at the whole playing field and they say, as a coach, they say, we should probably make this as the next play. We should, we should probably do this. In other words, they look at the current situation and where they're going. Here's the example, is taking things personally. Uh, an attorney calls me back and he says, let me do my deal. Let me do, let me do what I do best. I'm an attorney, you're an agent. That just recently happened. So I said, fantastic, great. Don't want to tell you how to do your job. So a week goes by and I revisit it and I said, well, you know, listen, I, I know you're a professional and, and you both, we both want to get this transaction done for the owner. I, in the past, and then I brought up a story and I said, in the past, this is what I've done. I've called, I've given this information and it's actually with a governmental organization that we need approval to get the transaction done. So the owners are looking to sort of the attorney, but really to me and saying, okay, dude, why is this not, why are we not closing? We got the clear to close from the co-op, the bank is fine, the money is there, we're all set, but we need this, this government agency to sign off on the document. Having a government agency sign off on a document is not easy. Okay, if you've ever dealt with the city of New York or probably any city, they don't just sign off leisurely and just say, yeah, go ahead. So the attorney says, I know what I'm doing. Okay, great, hung up on me. I called him back, I said, well, you know, this wasn't very professional, hangs up on me again. I said, all right, you know, like, what am I gonna do? Someone that takes it personally will get mad. They won't like the attorney, but th that's the thing is, if, if you get into that, 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 that muddies the water of the transaction. And essentially, if the person, the broker, takes it personally, they're essentially doing it for their ego. They're essentially, you know, understanding that this person may have had a tough day, or this person does not like brokers, or whatever the case is. So a week later, I go back, and now we're both together understanding that if we call this per this this government agency who connects us to this person, because I've done it in the past, who connects us to this person, we'll probably get to the, the exact person in City Hall who's dealing with our file. But at the time that I first called, they weren't having any of it. They weren't, they were like, I got it. I don't like brokers, hangs up, boom, hangs up again. You can't take it personally as an agent and as an owner, this is really hard. But the best way to do it is actually Barbara Corcoran, I'll leave you guys on this because I know it's a long video, is that Barbara Corcoran said something very interesting when she was hiring, she would actually say to each agent, right before she hired, she would say to each agent, I don't think you're gonna make it. New agent, experienced agent, whatever the case is, before Barbara Corcoran actually brought any agent on, she would just say, nah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be successful in this business. And she said, if that person, you could see in their eyes that, that they want to defend or find a resolution or get hired, that, that's the person she wants to hire. In other words, if I see that the end goal is to defend my ego and not get the transaction done, that's not in the benefit of the owner. My defending someone that, you know, the board is gonna not like you, an agent or a, you know, contractor, there's so many areas, and if you take it personally, that's not good. So we'll go over it really quick. Uh, number one, so in other words, if the, if you as an owner, the question going back to the last one, if you ask the question, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think you're right for me. See how they react, you know, see how they react. So the first one is demonstrating their value in their marketing, demonstrating their value on themselves in their company. Number two is talking bad about other agents or other companies or about the industry or about anyone talking bad about anyone, you know, and, and that's very easy. Number three is defending their commission in their price. How do they defend it? Do they actually defend it or do they give in? Because if they give in, they're going to give in to your price. Number four, awful sales skills. 
skills. Number five is inability to connect or be social. Number six is lack of transparency. How is the deal gonna be done? What, what, what kind of marketing are you gonna do? When is it gonna be done? Am I gonna hold you accountable? Are you gonna give me updates along the way? That's, that's transparency. And number seven is take things personally. You don't want them to take things personally. You want them to be an objective point of view overlooking the entire field that's there and not, not get emotionally you know, involved. And when you do, then you start having people that start really fighting and or they start talking bad about each other. We've all been there and you kind of need to remove yourself. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Shoot me an email, charles at botenston.com. Again, we're in a normalized marketplace. You need a professional. These are the top seven things that as a seller, you need to know before you start hiring because otherwise your home is going to sit or it's going to sell a lot below where it should actually have sold. So have an amazing day. Leave your comments below. Talk to you guys soon.